I'm gonna be honest with you. He was a control freak here in this world. But he says to me this, he says, Matt, I was always scared about health because I knew that this was something that I couldn't fix. If he ever knew that this was going on, he says, Matt, I wouldn't have been able to function. I would have been worried every single day. I wouldn't have been able to live life the same way. I am so happy that you're here because right away your father was like, Matt, my girls are here, my girls are here. And I gotta tell you that when I'm connecting with him, he says to me, Matt, I have to be the first through because they're never gonna believe that I would be here. And to be honest with you, he's, he's your, your father's a hot shit because he said like what was on his mind here in this world. And when I'm connecting with him, he says to me, Matt, he says, you don't understand my family. He goes, we're all a little nuts, he tells me. He says, and they weren't expecting this to be real. They weren't even expecting to get a reading or for me to come through or to connect. No, no. But it's his soul is birthday. here. It's my birthday. <laughs> oh it's my God. I had to come through we told today. must. So know that that would be the reason why. And the moment I'm connecting with him, right away he says to me, first Matt, I wanna thank them for keeping my clothes. He tells me that there was clothes that you kept of his here in this world. He goes, and they don't know what to do with them. They're trying to figure out what to do with my clothes. Like they're gonna make something out of it or do something with it. Let them know, thank you for keeping them. Thank you for keeping them. He goes to me and Matt, they need to like figure out what they're keeping over there. Cause you even have keys of his, he's telling me. He tells me there was keys that you kept of his. Um, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He's telling me the garage keys, garage keys. Oh, they're over by the garage that oh, yeah. I keep all the keys for the cars. Yeah. Hello, pay attention. Because he looks to me back. He goes, they still got all this shit he's telling me. And he's laughing about this. He goes, what are they going to use this for? They don't even know where these go to, he's telling me. He wants me to clean house. Clean out, clean out the, the drawer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, your loved ones are still in that house with you. And first of all, he's telling me this because your dad would have never believed that this would be possible to talk like this, to communicate with you like no, this, no, or right. to speak in this way. No, right. But he what's so not, beautiful is he's telling me the moment that he got to the other side, he got so excited because in spirit, he's been able to watch over you every single day. And he's been able to be with every single one of you. But yeah. I have to be honest with you, when I'm connecting with him, he says to me, Matt, I wish that I would have paid more attention to my health. And I wish that I would have taken better care of myself here in this world, he tells me. When I'm connecting with him, this is really interesting. Did he have some type of an underlying illness that you weren't aware of or that you didn't know about? Well, he had glial brain cancer, glioglastoma. But we are aware. But we just uh, we didn't know it until the very last second. That's what I want to talk about because he tells me this was a ticking time bomb, meaning that he had this for quite some time and okay. nobody knew about it, including himself. Yeah. Because when I'm connecting with him, he says to me that he was, he had weird symptoms, but not enough to ring an alarm. He yeah, said to me, yeah. Matt, when yeah. I was here, he goes, I had weird things. I'm like, well, what do you mean weird things? He's like, I don't know. Sometimes I felt dizzy. Sometimes he had issues with his eyes. He's telling me, but mm -hmm. he never thought that it was anything with his health. He tells me that. He didn't pay attention to mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so him. He wants to tell you this one thing. He says to me, Matt, I'm going to be honest with them. Okay. And I would never tell you, I, I would never tell you a lie. I'm going to tell you exactly what he's telling me because your loved ones can see things differently in spirit. He says that this is something that he had for many years that was developing over many years. He shows me, he says to me that what he needs you to know is that even if, even if you got to the doctor sooner or realize it sooner or whatever it is, he says to me, Matt, he says, you need to tell them that I wouldn't have had the same life that I did with them. He says that what made him tick every single day was knowing that there was nothing wrong with him, feeling like there was nothing wrong with him. He says yeah. that gave me peace because he says, your, your dad and your husband, when I'm connected with him, he was the type of person that when he was here, he was a fixer. He could fix anything here in the physical world. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He says to me, Matt, he goes, you want a plumbing leak? I could fix it. There was an issue with the car. I could fix it. Everything. Mm -hmm. But the one financials, he could fix it. He says, oh, but the yeah. one thing that scared him to death was health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm going to be honest with you. He was a control freak here in this world in a good way. He was very yeah. protective of you. He was very protective of his family. And like I said, if there was something that was broken or something that needed repair, whether it be a relationship, whether it be something physical, he would be there to fix it. But he says to me this, he says, Matt, I was always scared about, I was always scared about health because I knew that this was something that I couldn't fix. Yeah. So he says to me that if he ever knew that this was going on or that he had this in his body going on. He says, Matt, I wouldn't have been able to function. I would have been worried every single day. I wouldn't have been able to live life the same way. Mm -hmm. 
So as much as this came as a shock to all of you, and as much as this, this happened so quickly, he mm -hmm. says to me, Matt, I didn't, I didn't give up any of my life because of this illness. Mm -mm. No, he fought hard. Yeah, he did. And even he though it was a short stretch that he fought, right? Even though he didn't get to be here all that long, he says to me, Matt, you got to let them know that I was thankful for every single day. And he says to me, because I keep, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm hearing him say, this isn't how I want to live life. He shows me going back and forth to doctors, back and forth to doctors, back and forth to doctors. He goes, I couldn't live life this way, Matt. I was doing it for them. He says, but my last year got robbed because I didn't get to spend any time with them. All I was going was from doctor appointment to doctor appointment to doctor appointment. I was tired. And he's going to me like this, Matt. He's like, Matt. I could run circles around you, he said to me. He goes, I never laid down. I never sat down. He goes, but the moment that this happened with him, he yeah. says to me that he was always tired. He had to take naps. He keeps telling me about how hard it was. Yeah, so he, he wants to apologize to all of you for everything that you saw. No, no. Because no. that was not your dad. And he says to me that that year that he was fighting, he says, Matt, I knew, I knew that I wasn't going to make it, but I was hoping just for another year. I was hoping for one good year. And he had it. We gave it to him. Yeah. So know that what he wants to let you know was this. He says, I will never forget every single thing that you all did for me. He wants to thank you for stopping your life. He wants to thank you for being there by his side. And he's letting you know that in spirit, he is fine. And he's bringing that through. Good. So know that he's there and with you. And also, is there also James... Jim. 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 Who is that? It's going to be James or Jim? His brother-in-law, Jim. He keeps telling me that name. Say, say I, I thought it was James because he keeps saying we say it's either with Jim or James. He keeps telling me that name. So yeah. it's going to be that he's watching over him as well because I'm hearing that name when I'm connecting. Oh, okay. okay. He'll, be He'll happy love that. that. A best, his, his brother-in-law. Their best friend, yeah. Oh, that was his best friend too. All right, listen, when you say brother-in-law, not everyone has a good relationship yeah. with their brother-in-law. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I no. just tell him he's watching over him. but Oh. And, and tell him... We we are getting all his signs. Yeah. Well, we listen, are. this is the biggest sign right now that is that that he's here. You know, what's so amazing is that when I'm not in the room with you, your loved ones still try to communicate with you. And that's the reason why you're sensing him, you're feeling him and getting, getting signs. This is his way of letting you know that even though he didn't believe in this or the spirit world when he was here, right. that when he went to the other side, his eyes are opened. And it's his way of letting you know that he is okay. He is safe and at peace and that he is with you. And we love you. him so much. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here.